Hi, I've been thinking about this stream alert concept for a little bit now. I thought, hey, what if we had something that looks like a public transportation ticket pop up like this, part of it being ripped, and it would display the name of the person who followed, subbed, donated, and maybe even their profile picture to then just go down. So I started doing it. In this video, I want to show you how I went about creating it. And then we're going to do this setup together in OBS Studio. So first things first, we had to design I had to design the ticket and this is what I came up with. I ended up adding this little icon here where the picture is supposed to go because I do want to share some of the files with you. And if you don't want to showcase people's profile pictures, you can just use this and that's fine. Top here is where the name of the person is going to show. And I have multiple colors depending on the alert. Um, just turn this off and boom, this one is for bits and then the red one for follows. So I exported all three of those in After Effects into After Effects where I decided to to animate the whole ripping part. And you can see it fade out a little bit like that so that it can be placed anywhere on screen with a decent transition. That wasn't enough for me, so I added a little bit of a pop animation, just like that. And I have multiple that will match the color of this specific ticket. And finally, I added a sound. There you go. So the thing I haven't done yet is add them in OBS Studio. So let's do that right now together. Let's create a new scene. You can do it in a group, but if you want to add them to multiple scenes afterwards, it's going to be much easier. And let's call this ticket alerts. The files that I'm going to share with you are the animation files, and you can add those as media sources. Media source, let's say ticket follow and follow alert. I'm going to put them in a loop right now just to test it. All right, same thing. Ticket sub, loop it, nice. <laughs> and finally, ticket cheer, just like that. Now we're gonna need the name and it's going to be a text. So let's add a text, call it user text or username text. And someone just followed me a couple minutes ago, so I'm gonna use their name. Congrats, you made it in the video. Boom, select font. In my case, I used uh, Cambria right there. Click OK. And I'm immediately going to press Control E because I know I'm going to have to scale this around. Positional alignment, I'm going to put center left. Bounding box type, I want to scale to inner bounds. And alignment in bounding box is going to be center left. OK, now when I scale, I can place this like this. And when I scale, I'm actually scaling the bounding box not just a name. Bring that down like this. Keep a little bit of margin. It's always good. So now if I double click on the text and someone has like an impossibly long name, it's going to adapt basically. One thing that I want to do is maybe put it uppercase. So I'm going to scroll down, text transform, uppercase. There you go. So far, so good. Now for the profile picture, I'm going to show you, but you don't have to use that. That's completely fine. If you don't press plus, go to browser, and we're going to put user profile pick. We're going to make this 300 by 300. We're going to keep it that way for now. There you go. We're just going to place it around here. And there's two ways with two different plugins that you can create a circle mask. You can use the advanced mask plugin by finite singularity. Just do this under shape. You want to select circle and then play around with the radius. And you'll have a circle. The other way is using the shader filter plugin by Xeldro. You can click user defined shader. Load shader text from file, browse, and then find circle. Boom. You just don't have all the options. Anyways, you have a circle. Let's place it. Just to make sure, I'm going to control E. Positional alignment, center. This shouldn't matter, but I'm a little paranoid. Place it the best you can in the middle. I like to keep a little border so that the colors show. That's nice. Now I want to put everything in a group. I'm going to hold shift, click on the bottom one, click on the top one while holding shift, right click, group selected item. Call it ticket alert group, boom. And uh, what I want to do now is basically animate, well, the animation that I want. And I'm going to do this by using the move plugin. You need to download, install, and I'm going to right click on the filters of the scene itself. So scene filters, click plus, and we're going to go to move source because we're going to animate the whole group for now. Click OK, or actually you should name this, sorry. <laughs> and this is going to be position one and position one. And I know, I like, I kind of know where I want to place it and I'm already going to do that All right, to be small, kind of like that. My position one is going to be rotated. You can click on that red thing here to rotate. Oops. There you go. Click rotate like this. I'm going to bring it all the way down just like that. 
Make sure ticket alert group is selected. Custom duration, 10 milliseconds, because this is just gonna reset everything. Now, something we're gonna play around with is the easing. So I'm gonna put no easing so that it doesn't have like a weird speed when it's going back to this. And then under transform, we're gonna click get transform. We recorded the, cu the current position and also rotation, as you can see, and also the scale. Now, I'm gonna duplicate that so we can create our position number two. Click, drag this up, rotate it to be slightly rotated towards the right here maybe a little higher and now custom duration we probably want something long like a whole second so 1000 milliseconds for the ease we want ease out because we want the ticket to come in full speed because there's no easing on that first position but we want it to slow down before it goes to the other one so easing ease out the type of easing is going to be quartic this is based on preference you can play around with it you can also look up the different animation ease types to see what they do to your temporal graph or your speed graph and you want to make sure you click get transform record that specific position then finally our final position we're going to drag it down i want it to be to the side a little bit like that i'm going to rotate it even more there you go duplicate position two to create position three click ok click get transform cool now you have position three easing we're going to put ease in and we're going to go back to cubic for this now in order to make everything go smoothly with one click by triggering the first one we're going to go back to position one scroll down and visibility we wanted to show at the end of movement so after you reset the position, make the whole group visible. Then what else? Next move at the bottom here, play position two. All right, now go to position two. Visibility is already on. We don't need to do much. Maybe we want this to spend like more time. Let's go with two milliseconds. We'll play around with that. Then scroll down, next move, position three. All right, now position three, whole thing is about three seconds for now, maybe 1500 milliseconds. So that total will be 3,500, I think. I don't know, we're winging it. Once you're done with position three, what do you want it to do? Actually turn it off. We don't want to see it anymore. So hide at the end of the movement, okay? So now if everything went well and I click on this, this is the animation that we get. Just pay attention to the movement, like the, the actual shredding and all that is not part of this because it's looping right now. But yeah, that's pretty much what it will do. Not a fan of position two's uh, timing here. 1500, maybe two seconds on position three. So it comes in fast, but takes its time to go out. There we go. Yes, love that. Okay, so that's it for the animation of the main ticket thing. Now we just want to make sure that individually those are not looping anymore because we know it works. So. Double click, click OK, we'll click loop, click OK. And then I'm actually going to turn those off because using StreamerBot to play that initial animation, turn one of them on, depending if it's a cheer bits or a follow, cheer bits or follow, cheer sub or follow, switch the name of the person who triggered it and also put their profile picture if that's something you want to do. So let's open up StreamerBot. I already created a group called alerts, I think, somewhere. Anyways, go to the action bar, actions, right click, click add, and we're going to create the cheer alert. Call it ticket cheer. Yeah, my group is not here. So create a group called alerts tickets. All right, let's deal with the data first. First thing we want to do is basically figure out, hey, who's the user who just triggered that? So right click, we're going to go to Twitch, we're going to go to user, and we're going to go get user info for target. Source type, we want the user and click OK. Now, StreamBot memorize the name of the person. Now, right click, go to OBS, go to Sources, and go to Set GDI Text. Remember our text for the username? So, Scene is Ticket Alerts. Username is Username Text. Well, Source is Username Text. And then, StreamBot will tell you you can use variables in text, for example, Target User. And that's exactly what we're going to use as a variable. In between percentages, Target, it is case sensitive, so watch out. Why do I speak like this? Target user, you, you. It's had a weird voice crack. So now it's going to change the text. And how do we make it change the profile picture? Right click, OBS, sources, set browser source URL. Or which source? User profile pic. URL, well, you can use variables. Target user profile image URL. That's the URL. Cool, cool, cool. Now what else? This is ticket cheer, right? So maybe turn on the whole ticket cheer thing. So right click OBS sources, set source visibility state, just like that source ticket cheer state visible. Click 
Okay. The whole alert lasts about four seconds. So right click, core, delay, 4,000 milliseconds. And then the same thing, except I'm gonna duplicate the whole visibility thing. Duplicate sub action, double click, and just make it invisible, AKA hidden. Now there's one thing that I forgot before putting a whole delay and all that is actually to trigger that filter that is on the scene to, to actually play the animation. So we're gonna do that right now. So that's on the scene, remember? So OBS, scenes, set scene filter state. And the filter was position zero, right? Position one, sorry. <laughs> filter position one, state visible. And we need to make sure that it's before the delay. All right, finally, we have the triggers for that. So the real trigger would be cheers, right? Bits. And you find that under Twitch, chat, and cheer. There's a minimum amount, maximum amount, but I'm gonna click OK. It will trigger at any value. But just to make sure that we test it, because I'm not gonna give myself bits right now, I'm gonna right click, core, commands, and I'm gonna create a custom command. Command triggered, create a command called test cheer, and the command will be test cheer. Click OK. Now if I go in my chat and I type test cheer, it should work. There should be my name as the text. There should be my profile picture as the profile picture. And ticket cheer should pop up. So let's do it. Test cheer and a little nervous. It works. I'm so happy it works. <laughs> it is perfect. It is absolutely perfect. So technically, the only thing you need to do now is duplicate this action and make it for the subs and make it for the follow. So I'm going to duplicate this. I'm going to show you how you would duplicate it. Let's do tickets follow. All right. Now, command is not going to be Twitch chat cheer, of course. So we can delete that. It will be right click Twitch channel follow. Boom. Now you want to have a different command for that. That's fine. Double click on the command, create command, test follow and test follow. Boom. Now it's not the same source that you want to turn on. So under source visibility state, double click, pick the source as ticket follow. When you want to hide it, same thing, pick the source as ticket follow. The browser source and the text are the same. So technically we should be good. Let's test it out. Test follow. Look at that, get level just followed. Beautiful. And you finally do this. I don't think I need to show you again. <laughs> you do the same thing for the sub. I'm gonna do it, we'll be right back. And finally, we can test sub. Nice. Ooh, important, since we have audio, if you wanna be able to hear it and then capture it through desktop audio, you can test it and you'll see it appear somewhere around here to get sub. Go to, I don't even think you need that. Just pick any source. Go to advanced audio property, test it, ticket sub here and set it to monitor only output. It's tricky because it disappears. I should have done that when it was looping. You can always like make them loop again to make that happen. And now you should be able to hear it and the stream will hear it too without it being twice. There we go. Finally, of course, you can add it to your scenes. So game, add a source, scene, ticket alerts, it's there and test it. Nice. For the commands, you might want to modify them so that only you can trigger them. But to be fair, like unless they know exactly what the command is, they're not going to be typing exclamation mark test cheer. <laughs> Let me add them to my full screen scene to get alerts. That's simple. <laughs> I like it. So look at the links in the description. Um, I will be sharing those. Well, maybe not the P if you guys want a PNG, I'll, I'll send that too. I'll share the PNGs and also the WebMs. So we get those animations. You can also use those in services like uh, Stream Elements or Streamlabs to just do normal alerts with them. Just do whatever you want with it. <laughs> Anyways, share this video with your streamer friends and uh, follow me on Twitch. I'll see you all next time. Go out there, make me proud, get level out.